Hey, it's Melissa with Sincerely Creative Mom. Today we're going to make a super duper cute Happy Easter wreath, purple with the polka dots, the Easter eggs, the bunny, the whole nine, super duper cute. We're gonna use our 14 inch pancake wreath frame. The pancake wreath does come in a bundle for the 14 inch, the 10 inch, and the sign extender. Also, most of them are tacked together for shipping, so you just gotta push those through when you get them. So this was a kit. Um, we actually still do have a couple left in our shop. The kit comes with the sign, the frame bundle, a full roll of mesh, enough ribbon for your ribbon tails, and ribbon for your bow, along with your pipe cleaners and <clears throat> the um, zip tie mounts for your sign. Now, there is a video of just general instructions for wreath kit cutting. Um, so if you want to check that out, it is on our YouTube channel actually. It goes over best practices on cutting your mesh, the size, the dimensions, the ribbon, all those things. How to identify your ribbon tails versus your bow, um, how to prep your sign, all those things. You can find that again. It's a cutting instructions video. Um, and it's it's not a design, it's all just the cutting part of it. So please make sure you're watching that video first if you purchase this as a kit. Um, we're gonna start off with our, our pipe cleaners and we're just gonna add them to the outside of our frame. Now I'm gonna add these kind of in a very specific way. I'm gonna make sure my twist is closest to the notch, whether that be inside or outside. I'm just gonna make sure the, the twist is closest to the notch. Make, make sure our light is right here for us. There we go. So our frame has a very specific um, 12 count spaces for our ensembles that we're gonna add, which include the mesh and the ribbon. And then the sign is gonna go over the center along with the bow. So when we put our ribbon tails in, everything's gonna be facing out towards the edge. Um, so that we can make sure we see everything at the end. So I'm just adding in all 12 pieces. Now, the pipe cleaner, <clears throat> as you see, we have purple mesh, obviously, and really cute purple and, and multicolored ribbons. Uh, the, the pipe cleaner doesn't necessarily matter because in the end, our goal is to not see them. So, you know, we're gonna make sure that we're going around <clears throat> and placing our supplies, our materials in such a way where you don't see those pipe cleaners, we purposefully don't see them. So I, I try to stay around coordinating or matching whether to the, um, to the ribbons or to the mesh. I try to, but it's not necessary. Um, this kit also could have come with white pipe cleaners, that's possible. I don't remember which it came with, but either way, uh, you know this is this is the tan we're going to use today, and it's going to be perfect. This is what's left of the roll. I ended up um, cutting a diff a little differently from the cutting instructions, although instead of um, taking off the first ten six pieces and using them for my ten inch frame that I showed you, I just took the first twelve pieces total and used it. So this is what I have left if I wasn't going to. Um, use that 10 inch frame. This is what I had left. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. All right, we're going to start with our um, mesh, of course. We're going to ruffle right up the center. Okay, so super easy. This one doesn't have anything on the inside to help guide you, but you're just going to go right up the center as best as you can, directly up the center, just ruffling, ruffling. Now, if you have never made a wreath before and you purchase this as a kit, I would suggest taking that that what's left on that roll, cutting a piece first before you start, because it, it is a you know practice and see. But also when you practice and then take the mesh apart and then do it again, the edges start to become uh, a little more frayed. Okay, so if you're going to practice with a piece, it it might end up not looking like a piece you want to use for your actual wreath. Uh, but I do suggest maybe using, you know, um, maybe using a practice piece just to see. So we're going to ruffle right up the center, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. 
make sure a pinch at the end so it kind of expands here nice. I'm going to go right down on top, kind of weave out our pipe cleaners here. Now in that cutting instruction video that I was talking about, I did talk about some tips on how to um, minimize your fraying, but it's woven material so it is going to fray. Our job is just to make it camouflaged and fray as le the least amount as possible, okay? So the least amount as possible. Make sure I flip all these under. So this is a pancake ruffle method <coughs> created with the intention of being very thin. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Me being very thin uh, to fit between your main door and storm door. Now, not everybody has a storm door or a screen door, um, but if, you know, some of my customers who live in Michigan, I started off selling in Michigan before I started selling on Etsy, um, and you know, they love the big wreaths, but, and they loved all the ribbon and all the stuff, but it didn't fit between their door. So I come up with a, uh, just an easy method way to put your mesh in. So we're just going to overlap it here. We're going to overlap it here. So our mesh is cut at 20 inches long. There we go. And then again, all six, we're going to do the outside six twist ties completely first before we move on to adding the sign and the bow. Right on top. Crisscross, nice and tight. Twist, twist. I don't twist more than that. I want to make sure it's nice and tight but I don't want to build up that pipe cleaner so that it's taller and wobbly. I want it to stay just low profile to keep this nice and tight, perfect. Okay. Now I know the ribbons are going to be, you're probably looking at, they're the mesh rather, it's going to look a little wonky at first, but it all works out once we have our, um, our ribbons on, it all works out wonderfully. I love the purple in this, the polka dots in the sign. It's going to be so cute. Again, we did, this was a kit, so we do have a couple more of these left as I'm making the video. If you're looking for where to um, find our kits, you can go over to learnfrommelissa.com. You can put in your email address there, and then the wreath kits, there'll be a link for the wreath kits on the list. If you're on our email list, our email friends do get first dibs at our new kits. So before I release them to the public and post them on our Facebook, I am sending out or typically, typically sending out an email. So if you are on our email list, you definitely get first dibs. At least you get the first couple of hour heads up before I post them. If there's anything left after our email friends have shopped, then I do list them on our Facebook. Okay, so it doesn't look the best, right? I'm not saying it looks the best, but, um, and I mean that, I mean that because you can see right through to the, to the frame, right? So I'm gonna start adding my first layer of ribbon. So again, these ribbons are um, two and a half inches wide. I cut them 14 inches long, and I'm gonna ruffle them right up the center, kind of scrunch them right up the center, face them out towards me, and add them right into my pipe cleaner, making sure those cut ends are right out towards the edge, okay? So I'm gonna put them all in first, and then I'll fluff them so that I can pick up my wire cutter the least amount of times. When you're making, you know, several wreaths in a day, you're looking for any little time saver. And so adding our ribbons and then cutting off the excess is definitely one of those things that are just happens. Also, I do, um, 
prep my sign at the beginning, typically, when I'm using the zip tie mounts so that everything is dry when it's time for me to use it. Going around here. Now I am twisting them about seven or eight times, twisting the pipe cleaners here about seven or eight times, just because I want to make sure when I uh, when I spread them apart and and place them where I want them to go, I want to make sure when I'm pulling on them that that ribbon isn't going to come out of that pipe cleaner, so or the pipe cleaner isn't going to unravel, right? So I want to make sure. So I just go seven or eight times, leaving there about an inch or so. Pick up my wire cutters once. Then another, um, or the, the most important part with the ribbon, of course, is making sure you can see all pieces. So I'm going to push down. I'm going to push down right there on that, and I'm going to pull it up and down, and then side to side, and then up and down, and side to side. So every ribbon is going to get me pulling on it up and down and side to side. Push that down, up and down side to side. I'm going to keep a pattern going. So I have polka dot eggs, polka dot eggs, polka dot eggs. I'm going to keep that going all the way around so that the eye, it's nice and easy to look at on the eye and it doesn't look choppy. It doesn't look like it's, you know, something's not going right. Uh, as long as I keep that pattern going the same way all the way around, it'll be very easy to look at and not look like something's wrong, right? You want your customer to look at it and be like, oh, I really love that. It's pretty. And, uh, you know, everything looks great or you want to come home to your door and just be really soothing. Sometimes when it's, you know, when I have eggs, eggs and purple, purple together, it just, it just doesn't flow as easy. Okay. The flow is easy. So we're going to make sure we keep that pattern going. Now you're starting to see that come out to a fuller circle, right? We've brought things in place to help make that look like a, more like a circle all the way around. And then our next layer, we're gonna add exactly the same way. Another kind of gets boring, I know. I know because I make hundreds of them. <laughs> but once you have, um, once you have that second layer in, it really does look so good. The one thing I'm going to make sure when I go here is that my pipe cleaners are just ready for me to come in and add our next layer. Okay, here we go. Taking our next 20 inch piece, mesh is 20 inches and the ribbons are 14. So I'm going to take my next 20 inch piece, ruffle right up the center. Just like that come right down on top, directly on top, crisscross, twist, twist, overlap here, overlap on the top, bringing those rib that mesh all the way around, flipping those upside down, inside out, whatever you want to call them so they help stay in place. We've got a little bit of fraying going on here, don't worry. Okay, and then I'm just going to point out here that you're starting to see now less and less of that frame. And this piece is going to go directly on top, overlapping rather, this piece. Okay, so I'm going to go directly on top. Now you start to see, as soon as I get my hand out of the way here. Now you start to see even less of that frame. Now, here's where I get to tell you. No one likes this frame more than I do, okay? This is based on, it's a patent pending frame um, based on my pancake wreath design. Okay, I'm co-invented this pancake frame, right? So that, and I, lo I love the frame, of course. No one wants to see it more than I do, right? 
but your customer does not want to see it, right? They they are if they see the frame, they're going to be like, "What is this? I can't. I can see the frame. Why can I see the frame?" Um, and so we want to do our best to hide it. Now, I know that it will allow us to put as much weight on it as we possibly can. I've made some big, big, full wreaths on this frame. Um, I don't know if you saw my um, pink Santa design or the red Santa design, or I made one um, not too long ago uh, with a, a cross and some purple florals. Just beautiful, beautiful designs. Um, this is the more simple recipe for the pancake frame. <coughs> Anyways, either way, you don't want to see the frame. And so, um, you know, we're going to do our best to ensure that. Making sure everything goes in. And then don't forget on top, so everything's coming out towards the edge. And we're going to end up with like a round piece of mesh in the center. You know, don't, what we want to do with that. We're going to always, um, I always have a sign that goes over there and a bow. So it covers that inner part of the wreath just perfectly. All those get ruffled upside down. There we go. It does catch on each other. Catches on your clothes, catches everything. You gotta make sure you're kinda wearing stuff that's okay if it gets ruined, that's for sure. There we go, twist, twist. Overlap here. Overlap here. Last piece coming in right in there between. And then we're going to put the same the ribbons in the same way, all facing out towards the edge. cute. Okay, I'm going to try not to touch those ribbons until the very end, but just know that as long as I pull them up and down and side to side, they're going to end up doing what I want them to do in the long run. But I'm going to try not to touch them too soon. Okay, so we're going to go and do the exact same thing, putting our next layer of ribbon right on top, exactly how we did the first one. Up and down, crisscross, twist, 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 twist. Pull up and down, side to side. Pull up and down, side to side. That way, I have a nice little layered look going on here, number one. Number two, that um, when I put in those pipe cleaners in the specific way, remember I said tie this one close to this notch? and the outer close to that notch. Now you see why I have a nice little layered look going on here. It just enhances that, the depth between the two, the separation it starts to look really cute. So we're going to go in, put all these in, and then we'll go ahead and cut them all off. Now a couple things I do, um, and I'm working with a 10 yard roll of ribbon. Sometimes the roll of ribbon towards the inner inner part of the roll gets a little crinkly. And so um, I try to do two things. I try to put those pieces on the outside. Okay, not that this, not, I'm just giving you reference. Not that these ribbons are crinkly. Um, but I put those on the outside and or I use a hair straightener as an iron 
right, to, to iron them out, right? Typically, the um, ribbon will with it'll be with it'll be fine. Um, only a couple times I've had it, <laughs> I've had it singe. <laughs> Maybe shouldn't do that. Um, again, that's at your own risk. That's just what I do personally. It's not necessarily what you should do. Okay, have them all in. Again, picking up my wire cutters for the second time. those all off. Now, those one thing different for this, one thing different for this, and I've been doing it, lately, I've been verbally doing it lately, <coughs> I didn't realize I was actually doing it, um, and one thing I do is I make sure I push down here and push forward. So it's really going to accentuate, accentuate, accentuate the layered here. Right? And I kind of just went all the way out of order. So let me get myself situated here. There we go. I'm going to push down and through, down and in, pull it apart, pull it apart. This is so stinking cute with these polka dots and the eggs. So cute. In, up and down is the key, side to side. Up and down side to side. Now, you see that mesh is caught on that ribbon? I'm okay with that. It helps keep it in place. I don't necessarily want to take it apart and pull it, pull it apart from each other. I'm fine with that. It is not bothering me at all, and if it can help it stay in place, I'm totally for it. It's when it catches on my brand new knit sweater that drives me crazy. So when I'm hosting classes, you know, I always try to be like, um, you know, give them a heads up, like wear an apron, you know, don't wear something that you love. Okay. All right. So, so cute. So my sign is probably ready for us. Um, not probably, it is. We have three pipe cleaners left. Two are going to be for our sign. One's going to be for our bow. Sign is super easy, so I already prepped it. Again, make sure you're watching that um, the prepping instructions video to help give you tips on how to prep. Make sure you're using that extra glue if you have it. So I'm going to take my pipe, my wire pipe cleaner, and just slide it right through, crisscross, twist, twist. Typically, I use I prefer to actually use a zip tie. Uh, staple gun. However, finally mine decided it was not going to love me anymore. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's just, it's not, it's not loving me anymore. So we're going to put that right there. Like, so for, my, for the sign, I want to make sure I'm covering one, two, three, four pipe cleaners. One, two, three, four. I want to make sure that covers four. Look at how cute that looks with the polka dots. I'm not going to attach it just yet. We're going to add our bow first. Okay, now the bow recipe, very much the same as far as the layers go, as far as how to assemble each layer, how many layers could vary per kit. So this kit has one two and a half inch and three one and a half inch. Typically it's one two and a half inch and two one and a half inch. So I just added an extra one just because it was too cute to pass up. So we're gonna um, start with our first layer and then always, this is always, this is typically the same. I start with a seven inch tail and a six inch loop. Typically it's the same, seven inch tail six inch loop typically this is the same okay and then i'm going to pinch here pinch pull that apart again twist loop 
Okay, eyeball it, pinch, twist, loop, perfect, pinch, and twist. So this bow has two loops on one side and two tails on the other side. Okay, and now every time I do a layer, I'm gonna make sure I flip them back and forth. So the two layer, layers, two loops are over here for this layer. The next one, the two loops are gonna be over here. This one's a little bit long, so I'm gonna cut that. Okay, and then this will be the bottom of my bow actually. So it'll come down the edge and be the, the longest part will be on the bottom. Okay. I love this plaid so much. I, again, plaids, if you don't know me, you're just following me or, de, or have been following me for a while and you just haven't heard. I love plaid. I love plaid. All the different plaids. So again, we're going to go a little bit smaller every time we add a layer. A little bit smaller every time we add a layer. So pinch, twist, loop, pinch. Now that could be a quarter of an inch. It could be a half inch. If you really want to be frisky, it could be a whole inch. I go about a quarter of an inch smaller every time, okay? About a quarter of an inch. Now, once I have this in place, I'll really be able to um, fluff that out a little bit more. But for now, I see I must have grabbed the end of the roll for myself. Okay, now just a little bit lighter purple, coming in there with a little bit of a contrast. Totally love that. Again, a little smaller, a little tiny smaller. Pinch part, twist, loop, pinch, twist, loop, making sure everything is about this. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but definitely close, okay? So my tail's getting longer because my measurements are getting shorter, right? Let me put that in here this way, <clears throat> right? And then I'm also just making sure that every time I put my layers in, I'm kind of placing them so that I can see, I can see all the layers of that bow, right? I can see all the layers. I can make tails shorter, I can't make them longer. So I'm trying to be mindful of what, what's going on here. Okay, so last one, our, our first loop is little, it's about three inches, okay, that's going to help hide our pipe cleaner, twist, loop, it doesn't go towards our, our loop count, pinch, twist, loop. Pinch, twist, loop, pinch, and twist. Now I want the tail to come down, really. Oh, I can't. Those are going, okay. It's going to go this way. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Go this way bunny. There we go. Okay, so our, our pipe cleaner, this one's going to go over here. This one's going to go over here. Okay, so our pipe cleaner, we're going to just lift this off here. Nice and easy. So I push down. I always push down before I lift up. And then push down and then lift up. Release it there. Make sure I have my hand on the top and on the bottom. Okay, I kind of squish, squeeze it, squish it. There we go. 
nice and tight, twist, twist. Hold that in the bottom of my hands, move that to the top. Okay, and then make sure I'm fluffing it out so I can see all those layers again. This is such a cute ribbon. This is so cute. Super cute. Super duper cute, okay? So now I'm gonna add in, look at that. So cute, okay. I'm gonna attach our pie cleaners to our sign, to our to our frame. I'm gonna take our pipe cleaners and weave it through that mesh straight down and then get it right through to our frame. So I can attach that pipe cleaner around the frame, attaching it to the whole kitten caboodle here. There we go, just like that. Making sure I keep it in place. I'll pull that right through. Now I could have gone in just right there and grabbed it with that, but I didn't, so I'm just gonna grab it around the whole frame so the back looks nice and clean. Okay, let's flip it over so I can see the other side, making sure. We're still covered on those four pipe cleaners. I'm still in the center. This is why I didn't want to take the time through the design to play with the mesh. I'm sorry, the ribbon, because I am definitely flipping this back and forth. I'm moving it back and forth. Everything's moving, and I'm going to have to do it all over again before I put it on the door to take pictures. I know I said I'm not moving anything out of the way, but my pipe cleaner doesn't go through the ribbon, so I am moving that out of the way. I meant I'm not moving the mesh out of the way. I'm just going straight through it. There we go. Again, it would have been a perfect spot for me to just grab it right there. But I had enough pipe cleaner that left me. You put it right around the whole frame. There we go. Now it is not coming off. Nothing shake, nothing shake it, shake it, shake it. My ribbons are going everywhere. My side is not moving anywhere. Nothing, 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 nothing's moving. Okay. I'm going to put my goal now is to hide, make sure I'm hiding those two. And you know what? Just to be safe, I'm just going to tuck those two little pieces under. I do see a you know fraying mesh. It's it's fine. One little piece, so don't, don't worry about it. Okay, here we go. Now I'm gonna go right down here. So my bow, the base of my bow comes in right there. Let me see what's under there. Well, let's see. Now, I personally am okay with my bow going over my sign. A little. Not too much. I still want to see those words, of course. Never fails that pipe cleaner will for sure end up you know, the pipe cleaner is too, too, where is this? Two wires kind of woven together is the pipe cleaner. Never fails though, it always gets stuck. Like those wires separate and it gets stuck. It drives me crazy. Okay, so here's what I did for this one. I'm just gonna squish the bow here for a second. I just took my pipe cleaner and put it in right where that hole was. I'm fine with that. Just created my own little spot because that's where I wanted my bow to go. There we go. 
tuck that all under. Still nice and clean back there. Super duper cute. Let me just make sure I'm not so far over. The one thing um, I didn't mention, but I'm going to now, your bow, the longest part of your bow is going to be those that first layer, the tails, that first layer. You want those coming down off the edge of your <coughs> off the edge of your um, wreath, not up into your sign, right? There we go. Super, super, super cute. It is just darling. I absolutely love it. That plaid is my favorite. So, so cute. So cute. Y'all, I hope that you're subscribed and following us. If you purchased this as a kit, thank you very much. I hope that you enjoy. And either it looks beautiful on your front door or, of course, on your customer's front door when it sells. Um, I'll be taking this one over to the boutique and listing it on Etsy. It'll be going in both spots. Um, have a good system that allows me to do that. And then when it sells in one spot, I make sure I adjust the other spot. Um, and then, of course, I'm just going to go around, make sure I touch every single one of those ribbons helping them go right in place, right where I need them to be. No one gets covered up. No one gets to hide. I want to see all of them the best I can. Super duper cute. Y'all, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to be subscribing. Please make sure you're subscribed so that you get notifications and things when we're live. Also, the last thing, most importantly, to follow us and get all of our links, you can join our email list, get our phone number, our favorite suppliers, our list of our favorite supply, uh, tools, all the things. If you go to learnfrommelissa.com, learnfrommelissa.com, it'll be in the description of this video, learnfrommelissa.com, and you can get a list of so many helpful things um, and free, free resources, classes that we have available. Again, our text message, join our email list, all those things. This was a kit, as I mentioned, and our email friends get the first dibs. We send out an email when we have a new kit, and they get to shop our kits before we post it on our um, open public social media. So I hope that you, if you're interested in a kit, that is where you want to be for sure so that you can ensure your first opportunity to, um, to purchase. And that's all I have for you. I hope that you enjoyed so much. I totally love it. Until next time, thank you very much and have a great day. Bye, y'all.